I just cut my hair. Can you tell? I use scissors. See? Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I am your host Nathan Nile, and this is the first edition of WNBA Weekly for the 2014 season. For those of you who don't know, WNBA Weekly is a show I started to cover the WNBA because, well, no one else does. So, I come on here twice a week, one up on Monday and one on Friday, and I discuss what's happened recently in the WNBA and what's going to, and I talk about what might happen in the upcoming weeks. I'm not an expert, I don't claim to be, I'm just a fan who loves watching the game. So, a quick recap of some of the big stories from last year. Uh, be, uh, you have the three to C, uh, Brittany Griner, number one overall to the Phoenix Mercury, who somehow, despite the odds, won that number one pick in the lottery, even though they should have been third. And then second overall, and then they dealt it down to the Chicago Sky. Then Skylar Diggins, third overall to the Tulsa Shock. Uh, and Skylar, she had her moments of glory. I think there were there were at least two, possibly even three games where she had double digit assists, and so that's good. But as a whole, she had more turnovers than assists, and she ended up being a bench player for the majority of the season. And then you have uh, Brittany Griner in her debut. She dunked twice, only the second player in WNBA history to have two dunks, even in the same season. Uh, the other one being Candace Parker, and she th and Brittany Griner is the first, per only the third per dunker ever in the league, and she did it twice in her first ever professional game and then but then it was Elena Della Don after that just basically dominating she was the unanimous rookie of the year winner uh, she led the Chicago Sky they had the best record in the Eastern Conference and the number one seed overall before they got swept in the first round by the fever <laughs> before the season started what we got word that Lauren Jackson and Sue Bird would both miss the season with injuries and I think a lot of people expected Seattle to miss out on the playoffs, but behind the veteran Tina Thompson and what she, in her final season, you know, great defense led them to to their 14th consecutive play. No, their 10th. Uh, I'll have to look that up. The San Antonio Stars, however, they did not fare as well. They also got the news that their two biggest players, uh, Becky Hammond and Sophia Young, they were both. Sophia Young, they knew ahead of time they were going to miss the season. She was going to miss the entire season. Becky Hammond, she hurt her finger just before the season started, like basically the day before their first game. And when she finally came back from that, she played a total of 12 minutes before injuring her knee and missing the rest of the season. And they didn't fare too well without her, uh, though. Uh, Danielle Robinson, she played out of her mind. She led the league in assists. She made her first All-Star game. And unfortunately, though, one of the biggest stories from the Silver Stars is that they allowed what Carter Williams to score a league record 51 points in one game. The former leg record was tied between Diana Taurasi and Lauren Jackson, who each had 47 at different points. Then Requana, only in her second year, that she ended up dropping 51 on them. Um, and, and Liz Cambage, at first she said she was not going to play, but then she showed up, and in the second half of the season, she was playing out of her mind. She was averaging 20, 28 and 10, basically. And she, and she was looking like an MVP candidate, but the award ended up going to Candace Parker, who also got the All-Star Game MVP award. And so this was her second top league MVP, the first one when she was a rookie. At this point in time, Candace Parker is starting to remind me of Carl Malone. Because she is easily the best player in the game, but it seems like she just can't win in the playoffs. But you know who can win in the playoffs? The Atlanta Dream. Uh, three of the past four years they've been to the, to the WNBA Finals. I mean, how many straight years have they been to the Eastern Conference Finals? Basically every year of Angel McCartrey's career. But it seems like they get swept every time they go to the Finals. Uh, two of those times by the Lynx. Behind a great performance from their Finals MVP, Maya Moore, the Lynx sweep the dream to get their second title in three years. So those are a few of the major headlines from last year. 
If you want to know about some of the big stuff leading into this season, I've done a lot of different videos covering some off-season news about injuries, trades, and the draft. So, you know, if you want to, you can check out my channel. You don't have to. I'm just saying. There's more information over there. So without further ado, we're going to start talking about the games that are going to be played during the opening of the regular season, starting with Friday, May 16th. So once again, this is a new season, so for those of you who haven't seen my videos before, I will tell you which games are being broadcast nationally. For the other games, check your local listings, or you can catch every single game on WNBA Live Access. And if you don't have it already, download the WNBA Center Court app. So the regular season starts with the defending champion Minnesota going into Washington to face off against the Wizards. And the Wizards, you know, they've got Ivy Ladder. She had a great performance, made her way to the All-Star game last year. They've got Mike Tibbalt, the most winningest head coach in league history. What does Minnesota have? <laughs> two, two finals, trophies, they, and they won the preseason tournament. No big deal. My MVP candidate, Maya Moore. <laughs> The Lynx have proven that they're an amazing team, and I think any game they play in is worth watching. Just because either one, you're excited to see a really good team win, or two, you're excited to see a really good team manage to topple the, the, the team that has proven to be the best in the league. You can argue with me all you want, but Minnesota is the best team in the league. They've been to the finals three years in a row. That is hard enough alone, and they won it twice. Then you've got New York and Connecticut, and for those of you who don't know, on draft night, Tina Charles was traded to New York for Kelsey Bone and the rights to the fourth overall pick, which New York used to get Alyssa Thomas, and so she was sent over to Connecticut. So Tina Charles coming, you know, going back to Connecticut to face against the team that she won an MVP trophy for. Meanwhile, Connecticut, three first-round draft picks, two of them I pretty much know for sure should be starting this game. If nothing else, it should be fun and interesting. It should be exciting to watch. Next, you've got San Antonio at Atlanta. Both of these teams looking to rebound from what you know, they consider to be disappointing seasons. Atlanta, they played so hard just to go to the finals and get swept. And now they've got a new head coach. Uh, they just, they got swing cash in the trade. Meanwhile, San Antonio, Sophia Young is back, Becky Hammond's back, Caleb, they drafted Kelly McBride third overall. In all honesty, the level of competition, especially in the Western Conference, is so high that I fully expect San Antonio to be a lottery team. But they are my team, and so I hope to God they prove me wrong. I'm going to be cheering for them all season long. Then you've got Indiana at Chicago and Chicago probably looking to avenge that first round upset where they got swept by Indiana. And Indiana to me personally, they kind of seem like a team on the downfall recently. I mean, to me they're catching season aging. Injuries have been a huge issue for them over the past couple of seasons. And I just, I feel like they probably have even more to prove than the Sky because the Sky, they're such a young, strong team. Last year they had uh, two award winners. Della Don Rookie of the Year, Fowles Defensive Player of the Year. They picked up Marquisha Gatling with their first round pet draft pick. But this is a team that's very strong and a lot of people could expect would expect them to dominate again this year. Then you've got Los Angeles at Seattle. Sue Bird returns from a year-long absence to try to take down the reigning MVP. That's going to be fun, no matter how you slice it. Then on Saturday, you've got Atlanta at Indiana, a rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals from last season. Then you've got Chicago at New York. And Atlanta Deladon played very well against the Liberty last season, but now you've got Tina Charles there, and so she and Sylvia are going to be battling down low. It'll be an interesting matchup. Then you've got Tulsa at San Antonio, which I'm looking forward to, but I'm also not looking forward to. But for the same reasons, because Raquana Williams scored 51 against us last time we played her. And now they've also added Odyssey Sims, and so far in the preseason, Skylar Diggins has been playing pretty damn great. Then you've got Seattle going into Phoenix to play the Mercury. Uh, Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi, both UConn alums, former teammates, going off against each other. That's always a good battle. As of right now, though, it's hard to say for sure that there's anyone on Seattle who can stop Brittany Griner. I mean, she's looking poised for a breakout year after the disappointment that was last season. She led the league in blocks, which is impressive. She led the league in dunks. 
didn't do much of anything else. And I'm looking for her to try to break out, and this is one of the teams that if nothing else, physically she has the advantage over everybody. No one player can match her size and athleticism. So we'll see what happens. On Sunday you got two games, one of them Connecticut at Minnesota. And Connecticut, they're, they're a very young team right now, and I think it's going to be a fun season to watch them. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's hard to say how well they're going to do closing out games. And against a veteran team like Minnesota, you, know, you, you kind of expect them to get a loss in this column. But you never know. This is, it's a young team. They've got some explosive players. They could surprise a few people. I don't doubt it. I just don't expect it. And if you didn't watch the playoffs, well, basically, both of these teams are coming here to prove the same thing just different sides of the coin. Uh, Los Angeles wants to prove that last year's loss was just a fluke and the Phoenix Mercury are trying to prove that it wasn't. Well that's it to this week. Tune in again on Monday. I promise it'll be more exciting and hopefully a little more informative because stuff will actually be happening. I'm not into the whole off-season bullshit and I also apologize. I used, I was going to do power rankings, readjust them. I had off-season power rankings. I was going to do pre-season power rankings uh, to, after free, you know, free agency and the draft. But you know, between, uh, I got so many major papers that I do and finals and stuff like that. I mean, I'm in the middle of finals right now. I, still, I got a test tomorrow at 8 in the morning. For those of you who don't know, I'm recording this on Wednesday. I don't know if I'm going to finish editing it by the end of today, but, and I probably won't be able to work on it Thursday because I've got a final exam in the morning and then work in the afternoon. But I'll be able to finish editing it by Friday and put it up before any of the games start. But if you want some power rankings, obviously number one is Minnesota. I'll have to give number two to Chicago, and then I'll have to give number three to Los Angeles, and then Phoenix, and then I'd have to say New York, Atlanta. I'll say Seattle, Indiana, then the Mystics, the Shock, then the Sun and the Stars are tied for last. That's all just my personal feelings and opinions based on what I've seen. It's been fun. I'm your host Nathan Lyle. This has been the Fan Perspective. Happy opening weekend. I hope you get to see some of the games, if not all of them. You know, I'll be able to watch opening night, but then after that I walk on Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, so I'm only going to be able to watch highlights and stuff. But I pay, I'll pay as close attention as I possibly can. And hopefully this ne the next one will be a lot better than this.